Good afternoon. Today is Sunday, August 30th, 2020, and it's about noon here in Pasadena, California. My name is Chris Rabelais, and I'm the co-founder of All Sports Market, and this is the update for the last week. So the U.S. total debt, uh, at least the debt they will admit to, is now uh, at $26.5 trillion. Uh, back in about the mid-2000s, 2005, 2006, I said that at that level of ec economic activity that the uh, U.S. would reach its credit limit and things would get very unstable at this number. Um, the issue here is that now the inflation, is, you have to account for inflation over the last roughly uh, 10 years, 15 years, I guess it is. So it's probably a bit higher than that um, because $26.5 trillion back in 2005, 2006 is not the same as $26.5 trillion in 2020, especially with all of the uh, massive money printing that's been going on. But suffice it to say, it's it's closer to that number than in farther away. I would say it's maybe 30 trillion now is the is the correct uh, number. But we're we're getting dangerously close to this um, falling off point. Uh, on the development of businesses and ideas for sports markets in the future, we do have an API. Um, you may not know this. There is an API. It's actually been updated not that long ago, along with an instruction set. That information is in the notice board. It's on the notice board. If you scroll through there, you're going to see that. If you have any interest in building anything or starting to learn how to build things, this is the place to look. This is how entire ecosystems are built on, uh, you know, on structures like this. So uh, maybe put some time into that if you have it, um, you know, to build a business in the future. Uh, Queen Elizabeth is moving out of Buckingham Palace due to COVID-19. That's pretty astounding. And I I don't know that you can say anything else uh, other than just, you know, that should show you just how serious uh, this situation is, uh, that the Queen of England is moving out of her house, basically. Um, okay, so yes, I have made tons of changes in all costs across the board. I still look for places to do that. Um, I found a lot of uh, savings. I started doing this about a year ago. Uh, I saw that the economy was slowing down. I'm on the record saying that about a year ago uh, when I was traveling over to um, South Dakota for that event. Uh, I remember making several point posts about that, that I had seen it uh, weakening. So the point is, yes, I have made massive changes in costs on, on all across the board. Uh, I've done it on uh, taking the same acts to costs of my own. I started uh, ceasing driving my car about uh, late last year, actually right after I got back from the um, event in South Dakota at, uh, at Hero Club. I stopped driving the car just to really, that was to save on gas uh, because, you know, and see if I actually needed to be driving all the places that I was going if I couldn't do it some other way. So it started with that, and then it's continued since, and it's the same thing that I did uh, in 2008-2009 when the, suddenly the economy crashed and bankrupted USFE and cost us our deal and all that. Anybody that's been around since then knows what happened there. So, yeah, it's the same thing. I, I do what's necessary to keep the business in line, and all costs are open for inspection right down to, you know, brands of of items that I buy for personal use. I mean, I, I don't, nothing is spared. So whatever it takes uh, to make sure that I can allocate the resources where they need to go uh, so that the, the business can continue to move forward through these extremely difficult times. Uh, 13 years ago, the anniversary of Crystal World Holdings just passed. Uh, 13 years ago, the original company was formed. It was back in July of, uh, July of, of 2011. I'm um, sorry, July of 27, 2007. Okay, so on the revenue splits, uh, I, I'm fixed on this now. This is this is the right way to go. Uh, it's 0.5% of transaction uh, volume accrues, you know, 0.5% accrues to us, 0.5%, that's a half percent accrues to the underlying league. And I'm saying that we add on a 25 basis point, which is a quarter of a percent, uh, basically add that to the commission, which is presently 1% on each side. So it becomes one and a quarter percent. At this early stage, that isn't going to make a difference uh, in terms of 
uh, how the system operates uh, in terms of consumers and how they view it and how they, you know, it won't affect that, but it will allow us to bankroll uh, a half percent from each side for an excise tax of a half percent. So basically we're equal partners uh, with the, uh, we say the government is an equal partner to the leagues as an equal partner to us at each one half percent of, of, of volume. So uh, as a thumbnail sketch, uh, say $100 is the trade, you know, let's say ASM as a market trades $100, okay? So a half percent would be 50 cents, okay? So on that $100 of total, you know, transaction volume, the number that you see published on the outside of the website, um, when it becomes a regulated or exempt exchange, you take that number and you multiply it times a half percent. Or for simple terms, just use 1%. So $1 on 100 means 50 cents on, uh, you know, that's the half, right? So the uh, income for the three constituent parties, this is actually bookable income and tax and, and income to the league is going to be 50 cents. So a $100 transaction, 50 cents to, the, to ASM. 50 cents in excise tax to the uh, federal government and 50 cents to the underlying league of the traded team. Okay. So now you're not paying that. Uh, obviously it's not being taken out of it's right now it's coming out as a commission is 1%, but everybody already is used to that. So we would raise it by 25% to 1.25. That will not be missed in the early stages. We put that in now it will not be missed. The result of that, which I'll get to in a minute, will will is astounding in terms of the income for all the uh, the three main I would say the three main principles. Okay, so what is ASM really creating at the end of the day? What is this all about? It's a platform where you will be able to monetize any sports centric idea that's viable. Okay, in other words, there's a customer for it. You can find a customer for it anywhere in the world. Okay. It will create a platform to monetize any sports focused idea anywhere in the world. That's that's the central uh, premise. OK, you'll be able to build anything sports related for any customer in the sports field. OK, think about how massive that is anywhere in the world. OK, that's what it becomes. And the focus of um, the sportsvote.org, because remember right now to get to the goal, we have one job and that one job is to find a candidate to list to uh, to list on our market to show that we can do a, a formal fundraise. So the uh, sportsvote.org tool set, OK, is going to be uh, focused on on getting that first um two parts, getting the first uh, league candidate, right? Because that's the business success keys to everything. And then uh, also to spread the idea and to bring in more traders to test the model in the current format. Okay. So there's a dual purpose Rec uh, recruit and it's not to, to get them to uh, fund the pilot market or any of that stuff. Just Join and trade. You don't even have to trade on the pilot side, trade on the learning market side and help us build a data set. So that's one side. And the other side is going to be the uh, network effect, getting more help in the recruiting process for finding the candidate league leagues. OK, but we just need number one. So number one is the trigger for everything. Uh, OK, Illinois, uh, this is uh, made a bit of a. Uh, bump in the markets on gambling sites but it's it's a false positive okay illinois temporarily removed the in-person signups for their sports book if you remember this is the problem with the wear act this is the problem with state-based legalization is that in order to establish that that person is in the state you have to physically locate them there and to accomplish that and not break the law they've been doing that through in-person recruiting or in-person sign-up rather of the customer. They've waived that in view of COVID-19 and that's a nice trick, but it's it's temporary. Okay. This is doesn't change the rules. Uh, you still you're still gonna have to sign up in person and this still comes back to the central problem of the Wire Act. I'm seeing more uh, pro gambling uh, factions come out with stories addressing this. They know this is a problem. They're gonna try to pretend like it's not 
a problem in the mainstream media. You never hear it, hear about it in the ESPN or any of that, but in the actual working trade papers and those places where the meat of the discussion is, where it really is talked about what's illegal and legal and what the progress is, everyone knows this is a problem, okay? And this is what they're going to try to take down. And I've covered already why that's highly unlikely, especially given the fight that is guaranteed to happen with uh, uh, Sheldon Adelson in Vegas. Okay, so that uh, 50 basis points or half percent to the leagues, half percent to ASM and half percent to excise tax, the result of that um, is, is the following. So if you take trade volume, I'm going to use a smaller number, a million dollars a day, okay? A million dollars a day in contracts is not, I mean, it's not a lot of contracts, okay? It's, it's 10,000 contracts, 10,000 at $100. We, we do that. <laughs> we do that now on the, on the, on the uh, pilot market. I've seen that number uh, and, and certainly on the learning market. But on the pilot market, I think that's substantial because it's bonus margin driven. So $1 million per day, uh, this is just, the multiplier is this, it's 1.825. So if you take uh, daily volume, if the daily volume is a million dollars a day, the yearly profit to each one of those constituent parts is uh, is going to be 1.825 million per year. Okay, so one million in daily trade volume uh, is going to be 1.825 million per year in profit to each of the following: to ASN, to the leagues of the underlying teams that are traded and via the excise tax, okay? This is no accounting for income taxes. That's highly variable and personal to the situations of each person, but excise tax is on the transactions, okay? This is our regulation play. This is our case, okay, for regulation and also the benefits to the treasury as a result, direct benefits you can draw right now. Okay, so 1 million per day produces 1.825 million per day for the leagues, for the team, uh, for us, and for the IRS, or for, for the Treasury, rather. You move that to a billion dollars a day in volume, and it's, it's 1.825 billion per year to the ASM income, to uh, the Treasury, and to the leagues. So that works. That's the right numbers. It's the right formulation. It's not going to put any loads on the customers. It's not going to affect the model. And it will bring in the tax revenues at, at, at the transaction level worldwide right up front. And they're going to be massive over time. So uh, rules are changing on direct IPOs. For OK, so this is, a, this is another uh, important thing to watch. This actually took place a few months ago. This is the, the process rolling out of this being affected in the marketplace. The rules are changing on direct IPOs. Uh, this is not for us right now, but this is to watch and to strategize around and also on uh, allowing the accredited in investors. That rule, those rules have also changed, loosening that up. Uh, Davos is pushed to summer 2021. So again, this, like the Queen of England, this is important signals. Uh, sports betting exchanges, there's been a few of them that have announced or they're floating trial balloons to see if anybody cares. There's nothing new about sports betting exchanges. They they were they were around before ASM was around. Betfair is a great example. There's nothing new to this. This is just a rehashing of the same ideas over and over again. Uh, nothing nothing novel, new, or innovative at all. Uh, Vegas is down about 40% year over year in July 2020 versus last year. That is very bad and about where I would have expected it to land. Uh, you know, we've lost about half of our economy. And so, uh, you know, it's just math problems. Um, sports shutting down over social issues. That's obviously still in flux. Um, watching the game schedules, like I said, they're, they're getting pushed and stalled and started and stopped and all of that. So we're managing that stuff manually right now while searching for a more robust data provider, also one that we can expand easily. Um, to other sports around the world and maybe add in some other statistics uh, in the process so that we have a, actually a better product on the other side when we re-automate these um, opens and closes. 
So that's that. Um, I'm not going to get into the, the nitty gritty of that because it's just um, I, I, other than to say I think it's good and I think it's proper. And I especially applaud LeBron with the polling locations idea near the stadiums. I think that's absolutely st stunningly fantastic idea. Um, I'm working on an idea that I'm not sure if I'm going to pull the trigger on it. We'll see. Um, I, I floated this up actually four years ago. Uh, with Alper <laughs> in the 2016 election cycle. Uh, it's just a sub site or a sub idea or a marketing idea called Trump V Sports. Uh, may or may not pull the trigger on that. We'll see just uh, floating it uh, out there, just letting you know that it's, it's, it's not something new. It's something about four years old and it may uh, be a fly catcher for the, for the election season. I'm just not sure yet if I'm going to do it. 16.4%, uh, that's the unemployment rate. All you have to do is look at the uh, total number of all claims, all programs. Again, unemployment insurance is a legal claim. Everything else is a survey. I don't buy it. It's, it's flawed. It's infinitely flawed. Legal contracts are legal contracts, and almost everyone is going to take that seriously. So the real number is 16.4%. That's unemployment claims divided by workforce. And add about 5%. Uh, and this is my thumbnail sketch, but it's going to be very close. If you can get accurate numbers, it'll be very close. You've got about 5% more that have either never applied because they can't qualify, they dropped out of the system because they've, extent, they've used up all their benefits, or, uh, or some, other, uh, some other reason. Uh, they've given up looking or given up hope even. So that's about 5%. So our unemployment rate is still about 21, 22%. No matter, it's being about misreported by about half. Just, just like it has been. Um, Feb is about to start printing money again, big time. So um, you can play this game for a while, but it's it's going to it's going to come back, and it's going to come back. It's going to start coming back pretty soon. I would say later on this year, certainly 2021, all this inflation is going to to come to bear in in the world marketplace. Not not necessarily in the U.S. alone, but because again, our currency is everywhere okay it's a dollarized world economy but it's going you can't just you can't increase the the supply and mass like that and not have an impact so uh, i don't know exactly you know i admittedly i don't have a theory on it just yet it's a very strange moment in time um in terms of the the inflation is not there because the spending is not there but uh, also the the in, the money printing has temporarily stopped but it's about to start again it's very hard to get a grasp on on like a six month or 12 month window as to what it looks like. I think probably in the next 30 to 60 days, it'll be easier to to see that. But the inflation is coming home to roost. It has to. So we'll see. Uh, residential real estate is strong. Commercial is weak. Um, that's pretty simple calculus. Uh, work from home, right? People are modifying like their homes. They're buying bigger ones. They're making adjustments to make work at home permanent. You have companies that are now saying that's fine. So all kinds of incentives are going to kick in for home-based offices. And so there's, there's uh, residential real estate is staying, staying pretty strong because of that, while commercial real estate is falling to pieces. So you kind of have the, the uh, weakness of rents is being offset by the fact that all the commercial demand is coming back over to the reason. So that's kind of... It's, it's creating an uneasy piece there at the moment. We'll see. Uh, you know, it's again, that's that's why it's hard. It's hard to develop a theory that at least I would be willing to put out in public of what's going to happen next, because there's too many variables that are moving around right now uh, to get a to get a beat on it. Um, so gambling deals being announced, uh, trying to tamp down the negative news for obvious reasons. DraftKings numbers are terrible. They were beyond terrible, and they're headed into even more terrible. Uh, if you look at the earnings per share estimates, they're even worse uh, on consensus. Never mind, they missed by almost 300% in some cases last time. So all the negative news uh, that keeps coming out, like MGM laying off almost 20,000 people, yeah, go ahead and try to pitch that gambling is a growth industry when the largest player, if they're not the largest, they're second largest, players laying off uh, the population of, of a medium-sized city, that's a tough line to sell. So you're going to see puff, 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 
on gambling because these deals were put together a long time ago, long before anybody thought about COVID-19. Heck, they've been drooling about this stuff since the late 1990s when Ace and I were in Costa Rica. I mean, that's how we knew that this was a market. So this is not news. This is just the continuation of what they've been doing for the last 20 years that caused us to even create ASM in the first place. So, of course, they're going to throw anything they've got out there that's positive against this massive, never-ending sea of negative news, which is what it is. Uh, like it or not, it's clear there, there's, there's nothing, in, there's no actual hard numbers that point upward. They're all negative. It's all magical thinking uh, in terms of, oh, you know, keep the faith. It's that kind of talk that keeps, uh, keeps uh, DraftKings stock uh, out of the single digits which is where it belongs, if not in the toilet, because it's never made any money and it's never going to make any money ever because all it does is lose more money for every dollar it takes in at a faster pace. And before you use the Amazon model, that's a platform play. What's the platform again for, for this? Because with gambling, you build the platform, you kill your customers. So the larger the platform gets, the more customers you annihilate. So I, don't really see how that, that pays off in the long term, other than you guys cashed out early, which is nice and sweet. and Everybody saw that. So, you know, hats off to you for that one. If that was the play, you accomplished it, but you didn't build a profitable business. You just ge generated a, a, a payoff for your henchmen of a, a global giant scam that you've managed to cram through because you have rich and powerful friends. But we'll see how long that lasts. Things are changing. Uh, sports shared, I'm getting a couple, not a lot. A couple people have told me that uh, they didn't receive or haven't yet received their packages uh, from, uh, I think it was last month. It was last month, not this month. Some of those are international. Um, they're all gone. They've all been sent. All the information is gone out. All of the uh, sports shares are gone. I don't even have any copies of them anymore. Um, I went to Pasadena. Uh, so if it, if you didn't get it, it's gone. It's lost. Um, it, it didn't get there or whatever. I went to the post office yesterday and there's a sign on, this is a Pasadena post office, main sorting center. Actually, there was a big uh, Channel 7 Los Angeles piece here um, Friday or Thursday about the sorting, about all the slowdowns, uh, lots of news trucks and stuff. I actually took a picture of it because I was riding my bike by there when it was happening. And there's a sign there above the um, first class that says, add seven business days <laughs> to first class. OK, now, first class, uh, if you look at the, the description, it's two to three days anywhere in the country. Seven business days is actually a week and a half because it's five, five plus two. OK, that's how slow the mail is. OK, now, I don't know if that's been affected internationally, probably has. But there's nothing I can do about it. Uh, I've never seen it before. I've been a commercial mailer for 20 years. Nothing like this has ever happened in 20 years. Um, thank the current occupant of the White House, period. Okay. I have nothing to do with it, have nothing to do with it. It's not my problem. Uh, interesting. Okay. So um, just like to point something out, uh, you know, comments about how ASM doesn't work, isn't working and all that, remind me of people that say the same thing about Microsoft and Apple, okay? Here's the bottom line. You can say, you, you can repeat the lies often as you like, but it's been trading 24 hours a day, seven days a week, 365 days a year in the current model for more than six years on the learning market and more than four years on the pilot market. The learning market is pure, uh, learning money, imaginary dollars, and there's not even a reward system now to get any prizes or anything out of it, which we may, re may may look at that to incentivize it. There's not even that, and yet it trades tens of thousands, sometimes hundreds of thousands of contracts a day. And on the bonus margins uh, side of the market, we don't allow people to make any contributions. And just about everybody that could take money out has taken out everything they can. So there's there's night or way is is flowing cash yet it trades tens of thousands to hundreds of thousands per day for years, more than four years. That's on the bonus mark. So to say that it doesn't work is gaslighting bullshit. Okay. It does work. It absolutely does work. And every single day it proves that. 
Okay. It proves it every single day that it works. <laughs> so I don't know what kind of cocked up, stupid gaslighting, deceptive lie nonsense you're trying to sell, but it's clear that it works and it's worked in multiple instances, even after being dead. So stick that up your ass. Okay. Um, and in 30 days, roughly, uh, actually, it'll take a few days to accomplish it all the way through. And we'll put the staging of it uh, on the notice board so everybody knows what to expect regarding uh, canceled orders. You know, orders will obviously be live. So we'll have to have a pro golf of canceling all the orders, execute the split, and then you'll have to replace the orders. And all of that protocol will be uh, put on the forum notice board closer to the date in plenty of time for everybody to know how to uh, adjust their strategies and such. So thank you for your time. Uh, enjoy your Sunday afternoon and stay safe out there. Uh, COVID-19 has not gone away. Uh, there's almost 200,000 people dead in this country and don't believe any other line because it's a complete and total lie. Bye now.